mentioned about the uh, aquapunch. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, what is that, um, the purpose? The purpose, is it just for body pain or, because I've never understood. So don't think I'm crazy, Dr. Nick. I don't think you're crazy. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, it depends from whose perspective you look at um, okay. with regard to how acupuncture works. Mm -hmm. I, I get this question often. How exactly is I'm doing acupuncture on a patient? Okay. How exactly does this work? Mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, what we know acupuncture does through Western science, you know, through research, is acupuncture changes how a person's nervous system functions. So your nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord, mm -hmm. um, which in effect is like a computer. So it, it tells the rest of your body what to do. Um, and when somebody's not feeling well, or when somebody actually has an illness or a disease, often their brain is not functioning properly and not controlling body function very well, and it's been sort of reprogrammed. So the program has been kind of shifted. Mm -hmm. What acupuncture can do is by stimulating nerves in tissue, nerve receptors throughout the body, that can actually alter the function of the brain and the central nervous system. So at the end of the day, what probably is happening with acupuncture is we're, we're reprogramming how the nervous system functions. Wow. <laughs> That's what I thought. So once <laughs> you do this, they just lay there and because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying from what I've seen on TV, uh, but where you... Um, like the ends of it, yeah. it, it does it say. That's not, that's not always done. That's, that, that has quite the dramatic uh, effect <laughs> when you do, that's a, so a plant called mugwort where you can put it on the end of the needle and light it. Mm -hmm. That's not often done here in the States because you can burn people with that. And, and in all honesty, it's probably not necessary. Um, so what's on the ends of it? It's, it's, normally there's nothing. Normally it's just a needle. You can put a, something called mugwort Okay. Uh, it's yeah. Like an herb and, and you can mm -hmm. ball that up around the end, and you can light it on fire. But if it drops on somebody, you know, it's not going to feel too good. Okay. So, like, I don't, I don't use those te techniques very often. I normally just do the acupuncture, which is pretty straightforward. But it's probably my favorite thing for stress. Acupuncture is okay. phenomenal for stress. So I mentioned how it changes the nervous system, but it also actually causes the secretion of endorphins from your brainstem. And endorphins are your body's own natural morphine-like compound, like an opium. Mm -hmm basically. So again, acupuncture is not only good for kind of changing how your body functions, mm -hmm. it's also very stress. good for pain, pain and okay. for stress because it's increasing your own natural morphine. So I can't tell you how many times I've gone in a room when I've, I usually do acupuncture for about 25 minutes. So okay, I, that was my yeah, next yeah, question. 20, about 25 that? minutes. <laughs> so I have the needles and the person's relaxing. I'll come back in the room and they're snoring <laughs> like, like, like they've never snored before. When they wake up, they look at me like, what are you doing in my bedroom? It's like, I'm not in your bedroom, you're in my office. So no, it's very relaxing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, it's one of my favorite things for dealing with just general stress and wellness. Okay, now, the office, you just mis mentioned the office. What is the ag exact address to your office? Um, I was on Michigan Avenue for about 13 years, right by the Bean, and um, I uh, had enough with the tourists. So I, I moved about a mile west. So I'm on Lake Street. Um, it's 1002 West Lake Street, mm -hmm. which is at Lake and Morgan. So I've been there now about two years. Okay. And the uh, website, again, is? Uh, uh, Dr. Nick, drnick.net. Uh, okay. So viewers, you all know now that you can uh, go and check out Dr. Nick. Thank you. As, and get, I may have to come in. It's a good me, idea to get a sir. screening. I normally do a baseline screening, like at least for the breast imaging, and to make sure everything looks okay, and then do a follow-up. So there's no squishing? No squishing. None. No squishing. And, and, and it's just, uh, what, you just stand in front of a camera? You stand, it's, a, it's an infrared, it's a very expensive camera, <laughs> okay. um, but it's measuring infrared emission from the body, which correlates with blood flow. So the theory behind thermography is that when there's something developing, when cancer's developing, there's blood vessels that grow into that area, and that's what we see with the imaging. And so you can see this right away. You can see this right away. So normally I'm able to give somebody um, um, the results right then and there. So. I, I have them in the office, I do the imaging, I see the imaging, I give them an idea whether it looks like everything's okay or not, and then I also do examinations. So I'll correlate palpatory findings with what I'm seeing on the imaging, because if I'm seeing something a little suspicious on the imaging, mm -hmm. and I'm palpating something abnormal in the breast, that's going to change my impression, and then we're going to be doing additional testing. Wow. 
Okay. Okay. Well, now, again, uh, to all my viewers, you know, now you can get in touch with Dr. Nick at uh, drnick.net, especially to get a breast exam. That's uh, very important. And you also mentioned uh, to me earlier when we were speaking out front about the age limit. Tell me, what is the actual age limit that you should? Yeah, there's, there's been controversy for some years. Yes. Um, for lately, at least up until about a year ago, the guidelines have been start a mammogram at the age of 40. Mm -hmm. um, some women, they were starting at the age of 35 or earlier if they were considered high risk. Mm -hmm. And they were considered high risk if they had family members with it. Mm -hmm. Just having family members with breast cancer doesn't necessarily mean you're at high risk. And likewise, 80% of women who get breast cancer, they don't have a family member with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So you can't just look at it and say, oh, I'm okay because I don't have anybody in my family with breast cancer. That doesn't matter. 80% of women who, you know, are, that are like that mm -hmm. get breast cancer. But, um, so some women are getting screened in their early 30s, and incidentally there was a study that was published in 2009 that showed that women who are at high risk, genetic risk, should not get early mammograms because it's contributing to breast cancer, because mammograms, again, use radiation, and that's going to cause more problems. So women who are young absolutely should not get mammograms unless there's a really good reason to do it. So the guidelines had been for everyone else the average woman to start at the age of 40 and do it every year after okay. that point. Now last November new guidelines were released by the US uh, Preventive uh, Health Task Force which um, looked at all the research and they had, it was very good research, they were actually commissioned by Health and Human Services to investigate and come up with guidelines and this is what this commission does is they look at all different sorts of diseases, they did the same thing for prostate cancer in men, mm -hmm. look at the research and decide what are reasonable guidelines based on the risk of testing, based on over diagnosis, over treatment, under diagnosis, so they look at all the different factors. This commission determined that the best age for a woman to start screening for breast cancer with a mammogram is age 50. Not age 40, but age 50, age 50 okay. and every other.